But all I can say to you is that overall, the Bible gave something new to the world, the power of individual moral appeal an appeal to the free conscience of mankind against the sacrifices and slavish loyalties that had bridled and harnessed the human being. And on that note, I'll stop with my little history of the Jewish people. And we go back to the politics of the day. You get it? Is Israel the real problem? Should the U.S. continue to support Israel or throw them to the wolves the way Obama has done? And again, you have to know history. Please do not call the show if you don't know even a, a scintilla of the conflicts in the world and how the Muslims have fought the Hindus in, in India over Kashmir or how the Muslims have attacked China and how the Chinese don't worry about uh, any laws. They go down and suppress whole villages and kill them if they have to. Or how about Russia, the Chechen separatists who are Muslims? Or how about the Moros of the Philippines who are Muslims? who are essential, by the way, to the Spanish-American War, if you want to know a little history of that one. Now, I often don't go into history on this show. You know that I used to do it a lot more than I do now. I did it today, even though it's a national show in prime time. I took a chance. I don't have flashing lights. I don't wear lipstick. I don't have stockings and high heels to use to attract your attention. That's for Roger Ailes. That's his technique. But I think the talk radio needs to go in other directions and do a little, a little more depth here. Who is it? What is Israel? Why should we care about Israel? What does Israel the idea mean? Why should the United States be wed to Israel? Should we cut ourselves off from Israel? Would that grant us world peace if we did? These are the questions of the day. I'll take some calls now. I've, I've talked now for 75 minutes or so with breaks and whatnot on the history. So now I'm going to go to some callers. Okay? And I'll take you in any order, random order, anywhere in America. 855-400-7282. I truly don't know where to begin. Let's start with W... Uh, I don't know which station to start with. I really don't. Okay, Mendel on WABC is already... He wants to argue with me. So let's start with an Orthodox Jew who wants to argue. Go ahead, Mendel. First of all, you made so many mistakes. too numerous for me to get into them one by one. Uh, you know, I don't like you. You're the kind of person I detest... You're the reason that people don't like Jews in the world. Do you know that? What makes you think you're smarter than me? Because when you said... What makes you think an unknown schnook somewhere in Brooklyn with sponge cake in his beard smarter than me? What makes you think you're so smart? When you said King Haman, you showed everybody that you don't know what you're talking about. There never was a King Haman. It was King Akashverish. Number two, the reason that... Wait, what, what, what are you talking about? What is wrong with you? Don't you understand that your kind of small-minded hatred has produced prejudice in this country? Do you understand that your meanness produces hatred? Yourself, you just, because you're I have just given you the history of the Jewish people and millions of others who listen to the show religiously. And just remember, Loudmouth, the audience in any 15 minutes of this show is over 350,000 people in any 15-minute interval. Do you understand how big the audience is? So before you shoot your foul mouth off again, think about who, you, who you're talking to. You're not in the yeshiva berating students who have no chance to fight with you. What is the point of calling me? To tell me I'm wrong and you're right? Nobody knows you, Mendel. Nobody will ever know you, Mendel. The only thing you can give the audience right now is some sechel, which in Hebrew means wisdom. Give us some wisdom. Go ahead, Mendel. Okay, number one, the first prophet was Adam. And then there was Eve, and then there was Abraham, oh, there was Noah before them. If you don't have to come all the way up to Ezekiel and the rest. From your cult, sorry, no cult videos on my show. No cult videos on the show. Do you have anything else to share with this large audience that's listening to you, Mendel? Yeah, I'm going to share with you the reason for the Jewish people. The, the reason that they could never get rid of Israel is because God made the Jewish people his eternal people. There must be a Jewish people. Yeah, all right, let me ask you something. You, you're so sure of that. Did you fight in the IDF? I'm not born in Israel. I'm born here. Well, why don't you go there and fight in the IDF if you believe that? I you got a big mouth in Brooklyn, but you won't fight in the IDF. You let the other boys die for your beliefs. The world that would destroy the Jews. Why do you oppose? Why do you oppose fighting in the Israel Defense Forces if you're such an adamant, righteous Jew? Why? Why don't you go there and fight for them? Um, for burning in the yeshiva, which fights. The I just asked you a question. 
Why don't you go there and join the IDF? What, you're too good for it? No, it's because I'm good for... And who is it that defends men like you, Mendel? Who is it has permitted men like you to live? Isn't it the secular Jew who you detest? Not at who all. Who you spit on behind their backs? I love all Jews because every single Jew is a child. Of all right, take a walk. Now, now you understand some of the problems that we have in the world. You have throwbacks like this who think that every Jew is a, is a, is a, is a what's the word I'm looking for? A promised, uh, no, the word I'm looking for, a chosen person. Every Jew to a guy like him is a promised person. To him, Israel is the promised land. And he believes this with his heart and soul. And he goes to Israel and he goes to the ancient sites and he spits upon the secular Jews who don't follow the orthodox laws and yet it's the secular Jews who pay his travel, pay his way, pay for his yeshiva and fight in the military. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Look, if religious fanatics want to call the show, go ahead, make my day. But it's a waste of everyone's time. The audience is enormous. They don't want to hear this kind of bickering. I asked a fundamental question. I gave probably the most erudite, brief history of the Israel, the Israelites or the Jewish people you ever heard in the history of talk radio. And then I get this l lunatic from Brooklyn who thinks he's, he's haranguing of some poor kids, 14 years old in, in, a, in, a, uh, in, a, in a temple somewhere. The question is this with the Iran deal. Is Israel, first I said, is Israel the real problem? Again, a duh, duh, duh. I can't even develop an idea. Honest to God, my brain is too big for this format. You know, that's what's happening. My, gra my brain has grown in all these years. It was always too large for my own good. I can't condense it in 12 seconds. I need an hour now to, to say what I want to say, not four seconds. So I'll be back because I have a very long segment right after this. And I'll ask the fundamental question, are the Jews about to be published, punished again? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Last break, which was very, very short, I, I ended up by asking a question, which is, are the Jews about to be punished again? It was a, it was a very pregnant question. Because Jewish history is filled with punishment. Just as the Jewish people had been, be pre been predestined for and saved from slavery in Egypt, the ancient Israelites were also predestined to be punished by God through the Babylonians and then saved once more. And then, of course, we know about the Holocaust. Where did that come from? Why did it appear? What was the meaning of it? I don't even want to go into that. And what's happening right now is a continuation of this. And here in America, we have the equivalent of King Haman, the ancient, the evil King Haman of, of Persia, in the form of Barack Obama, who is very much like King Haman. But he is so silk smooth in his act <clears throat> that he acts as though he's the actual friend of the Jews, when the exact opposite is true. Most American people oppose the Iran deal, not because they love Israel so much, but because they know Iran is a rogue terrorist nation that will be a threat to world stability. That's the main reason. Most American people in every poll oppose the deal that Iran is doing with, with Obama and his profiteers. And don't make any mistake about it. There's $150 billion at stake. So just follow the money. Take any one of the senators, high-profile senators who's for the deal, see what their husbands or wives uh, have in business, and then trace the business to Iran and Iranian money. You'll get your answer, that's all. But let's go back to the big questions of the day on the Savage Nation. Should we continue to support Israel? Why or why not? We're at a new junction in, in, in world history. Everyone knows that. Some of us know it more so than others. Some of us see it more so than others. Some of us are able to have a global view more so than others. The world is changing. The flood of refugees coming out of Syria and Iraq right now was caused by Hillary Clinton and the Arab Spring one of the most unmitigated humanitarian disasters in human history caused by the very woman who gets up there and talks about emails as though that's the most important thing. It isn't. That's now a cover-up 
for what she did with the Arab Spring. And that's why suddenly ABC and the others are making believe they really want to get to the bottom of the email scandal. Because they don't want to get at the bottom of the real scandal, what she did to the, the world order. With that evil, evil man, George Soros, funding it. And that crazy maniac, Brzezinski, being the architect of the Arab Spring, Hillary Clinton enacted it. That's, that's my view of it. And now that's why you're suddenly seeing, oh, well, look at this. ABC is really hammering her on the emails. They're not They're doing it because it's a, it's a charade. Charade. They should be asking her about the Arab Spring and what it did to the world order. And should she go to prison for it? Do you feel that she should turn herself into the Hague to be tried as a war criminal for what she did? So let's go back to this. Let's go back to this. The world is changing. Humanitarian crisis, fiscal crisis, you name it. And people, unfortunately, are not willing to change until they're forced to change. We're all the same way. Nobody will change until they have to change. So the Orthodox Jewish people will continue on their merry way. They will continue to look down upon the secular Jews in Israel, even though it is the secular Jewish community that fights the wars and provides them with the money to pray in the yeshivas. They have to change. They have to change. They have to learn to live in the real world or they're not going to live at all. And here in America, we have to change. The world is changing around us. You know, there's an old adage I learned in high school when I was learning about evolution. I was learning about what, what animals died off and what animals survived. And so, you know, certain things you learn in high school, you remember certain, most things you forget. Certain things stick in your mind and you never forget them. And it was, I learned in high school biology, those animals that were able to adapt survived and those animals who could not adapt died. So the large animals, for example, I learned the dinosaur and the giant animals couldn't adapt to the changing climate at the time they died, right? You, you learn that. Of course, that was before the internal combustion engine, but don't teach that to the community organizer from Chicago. He didn't know anything about uh, the dinosaurs and why they died off. Nevertheless, those animals who can adapt survive and those animals who can't adapt die off. Everyone listening to the show, we are nothing but naked apes with a human soul. We're naked apes with a human soul. And we have to learn to adapt to the new world. Whether we like it or not is irrelevant. There's a new world out there, and there's a new world order that's emerged. And we may not like it, we may hate it, we may detest it. We can fight it with everything in us. But you know, I tell people who I know who are far more intelligent than I, and even more successful than you can imagine, who are crazy with fear about what's coming in this world. And all I say to them is, fear not because you cannot control a tidal wave. Fear not, you cannot control a tidal wave. Just try to ride it. Ride it. Get on top of that wave because you see it coming. Paddle out as far as you have to. Don't run from that wave. You better run into that wave. Something I learned as a young amateur swimmer in Hawaii when I lived there. I was taught by some surfers. I'm not a surfer at all, but I learned wave action. And the first instinct when you see a wave coming at you is to run away from it. That'll kill you faster than anything. If you can still get under the arc of the wave, you're going to save yourself by swimming through it. You ask anyone who knows water, whether you're a boater or a surfer, right? And what does that have to do with today? Well, there's coming waves coming at us. And you've got to learn how to get at the wave, get into the wave, and get through that wave. So now that brings us back to Israel. Is Israel going to survive this new wave of hatred? Now that Iran, which was once a pirate nation, suddenly has been made into a nation that's acceptable because of Obama, and now Israel's been turned into the pirate nation by the new King Haman, Obama. Can Israel survive this? I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not a prophet. I'm only a talk show host. I think that the Jewish people in Israel are worried that they won't survive. And the hatred against the Jewish people in Israel is not coming solely from Iran or anti-Semites. The majority of it is coming from fellow Jews in the United States of America with the, the uh, disallow movement. They are all communist Jews here in America, mainly college teachers, who are the, part of this divest from Israel group. They are the new collaborators with Hitler, and they don't even know what they're doing or they wouldn't be doing it. They think that they're on the tip of the social justice movement, but they're on the tip of the neo-Nazi movement, or shall I say the neo-Iranian movement, because it's one and the same thing today. 
And so the greatest threat to Israel is not so much Iran. It's the liberal 